Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. In today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a live demonstration comparing long tail tags versus a bunch of short tail tags. So very few long tail tags versus having a whole lot of short tail tags. What's more effective? I'm sure you guys have been in the position before, just like me, where we go and we tag products and maybe on certain products we do, uh, we add as many words as we can in the tags, right? Because we know that Redbubble allows us 50 tags per design and we add different, you know, characteristics like red, green, uh, you know, happy, uh, all these different words, right, that describe the design. Uh, it could be a color, it could be a sentiment, it could be really whatever it is, right? And we see this a lot, okay? And we typically tend to do this a lot. Now, is this spam tagging? Let's just assume that it's not, right? But what's more effective? Is it a long tail approach where we just have very, very few amount of long tails versus a bunch of short tails. What's more effective? Well, we'll talk about that in the video, but before we do, I want to go ahead and give a big shout out to our DIY income tutorial YouTube channel, which if you guys want to learn some tutorial videos or even just for pure entertainment, you want to log on and watch some tutorials and some guides of us doing uh, behind the scenes kind of stuff like designing Redbubble t-shirts, making apps to make money, um, you know, building niche websites, and, and you want to see like kind of the step by I step behind it or even creating Instagram accounts to make uh, income on, on Instagram. If you want to see all that behind the scenes kind of work, subscribe to the new DIY income tutorials channel. The link will be in the description box down below. Uh, just as the first video here, I created a few uh, uh, red bubble designs and I wanted to um, make a video of it. And so what I did was I did like a montage, like a quick edit, but uh, tomorrow will be the longer version, the 30 minute version of this video where I talk through everything and I'm describing exactly what I'm doing when it comes down to editing and creating certain designs. So if you're interested, check out the channel. There's going to be more content gradually being uploaded, like I said, on it's basically like tutorials of me, you know, DIY, do-it-yourself income, right, tutorials, and so I'll be showing everything that I'm doing, whether I get into, you know, I'm doing a Shopify store, or whether I build a website for a print-on-demand, or even if I'm creating an app, like I said, you guys will see all of that. And hopefully you'll be able to take something away from it, whether it's just pure entertainment or some knowledge, whatever it really is. So if you guys want to check the channel out, the link will be in the description. All right. So let's go ahead and get back into the concept of the video. So here I wanted to kind of tackle the concept of a bunch of short tail keywords versus uh, a few long tail. What are more, uh, you know, essentially what are more effective? Okay, so let's just click on a few here because I'm not sure what tags are going to come up. I search for the keyword love here and I just want to see what's going to come up here. So we have the keyword love and if you this is exactly what I mean when I say a bunch of short tail keywords. So we have the word kindness, happiness, happy, colorful, rainbow, love, self love. Uh, self love is a little bit more long tail compared to a single keyword phrase, but the word vibes, right? Health colorful. All these different words are referred to as short tail keywords because there's only one word in that phrase. And there's a bunch of them. We could see that there's a bunch. But let's just take this design that I created where it says here, when I forgive, I forget. And if we scroll down to the tags, I doubt that there's going to be a lot. Okay. All right. There is a lot. So this is probably not a good example. Um, but there's certain designs that um, will, will essentially uh, allow us to be quote unquote successful on Redbubble. And I'll go ahead and explain what I'm talking about here. So if you look here on a product where it says here, uh, when I did the search, when I forgive, I forget, right? And my design is right here. It's the second design in the list of four. Let's go ahead and break this down. Would you rather be now? Let's not assume. Let's not think of tags for a second. Let's not think of sales rather. OK, we obviously know that this design is selling because when we search for the word love most relevant, it's at the top here. So we obviously know there's value behind this design. But let's go ahead and, and talk about it from a income perspective, uh, you know, essentially theoretically. OK. When we use keywords like this, like when we use the word happy, colorful, rainbow, love, if we were just to click on some of these keywords and see 
how many results pop up for these keywords, we're looking at tremendously large numbers. Like the word colorful has 1.4 million, right? Uh, the word rainbow has 750,000. The word happy has 2 million, right? But if we were to search for a keyword that has a string of keywords in it, right, or words in it, which is essentially a long tail keyword, kind of like the one that I'm saying here. Do you see how many results exist? Now, there is a caveat to this, and obviously, keywords that have sh that are shorter tail can potentially be searched for more. But the whole argument here is that there's much more competition in these niches. That's why majority of people, I mean, let's be honest, there's uh, you know over 99.99999 percent chance that in a position like the keyword colorful, you won't be at the top. And it's not because of your design skills. It's not because of your tagging ability. It's not because of anybody's tagging ability or design skills. It's just a mathematics game. There can only be one, right? There can only be one at the top, or in this case, a few. And if we really break it down, and we take even the whole entire first page, right? The whole entire first page, which is, what, 108 results? If we take these 108 results and we divide it by the number of total results there are, that number is drastically small. It's, it doesn't even come out to a tenth of 1%. So what my argument here is that it might be more optimal to go for keywords that are drastically, not drastically, but but definitely longer when it comes to the keyword. Why? Because it will have drastically less competition. Now, we have to be as wise as we can be by choosing the right long tail keyword. So for example, if somebody's searching for a t-shirt that says, when I forgive, I forget, there could be somebody that happens to search for it on Google or you know any kind of other circumstance where that design pops up. And I'll actually have a chance of making a sale because there's fewer results. Now, it doesn't have to necessarily be four results. I was just using this t-shirt as an example here. It could be, uh, you know, a concept with 50 results, 100 results, 400 results, even 1,000 results. But the reason why I'm speaking from the uh, speaking about this sentiment, rather, um, you know, is because um, I have a design that's currently selling uh, for about it's on the first page in the first row and it teeters between the second position to the fourth position so it, it teeters between those positions and it's it fits amongst 300 something thousand designs so when you search for the keyword that it ranks for it's in this position or this position you know from time to time somewhere in there and the amount of results are about 300 something thousand okay and the amount of time that it took to get that product there and ranked, to me, I could have took all that energy and had put it into different products, right? I could have put it into different research for different products. And more importantly, I have a better chance at getting sales with different products with a different focus keyword. So what my argument is, is that being from somebody on both sides, I've been on both sides. I've been on the side where it's a you know a high com high competition keyword uh, that's very you know short tail and and actually making money in that area and also making money from the um, the long tail keywords. I would argue that having a few long tail keywords is much more financially beneficial than having so many different short tail keywords and the reason why is because just off of pure probability alone and when we talk about probability there's only so much that your skill can do for you i know i talk a lot about hard work and improving yourself and getting better and i do stand by all that but the reality is is like i said we have to be wise around the decisions we make and we have to ask ourselves realistically if this is our design how realistic is it going to be that we get sales from a keyword like the keyword nice or people or be nice, right? It's probably not realistic because of how much competition there is. So the really the solution is, is that we have to find keywords that there is search demand for, but more importantly, that there's less competition. And that's generally the golden rule, guys, is that the golden rule with Redbubble is you want to find keywords that have high search demand, but low competition.
Okay, And when we say high search demand and low competition, we're not being subjective here. When we say high search demand, we don't mean search demand of, or excuse me, competition. When we say low competition, we don't mean a certain number. What we mean is in relation to each other. Is it worth the trade-off? So when I say the trade-off, I'm saying the low competition that you're going to take for a certain keyword, is it worth the trade-off of having the low search volume as well? Or should we go for a different keyword that might have potentially more search volume, right? So we have to play between these keywords. And I've spoken about this before in the Autopilot Passive Income Redbubble Tagging course, which you guys can find also in the link in the description, where I clearly describe how to find these keywords, how to rank for them on Google, and how to rank for them on Redbubble. And I specifically said in the course that there are moments in time where we do have short tail keywords, but with these short tail keywords, we have to keep in mind that the short tail keyword, if we were ever to really make sales off of the short tail keyword, it would be off of the back of a long tail keyword. Does that make sense? And I can't go too deep into that here on this YouTube channel because obviously it's paid content on the course. And if that's something that you want to uh, or you feel like could potentially help your business move forward, I recommend the course. Um, we got a lot of students on there who are really enjoying the course and find it very beneficial and it's contributed to to a lot of sales. It's got 30 pieces of content and um, it's definitely heavy on the content. So something that I would say is, and, and I would recommend you guys to, to really look into is that when you're creating tags, ask yourself realistically, if somebody was to search for a specific keyword, how is it, how realistic is it that they'll number one, find my design and number two, does my design stick out? And more importantly, number three, if they find my design, how realistic is it that I'm actually going to get a sale? And, you know, it could be, you know, you could pop up on a design, you can have a good design, but if it doesn't essentially grab sales, then really what's the point of it have being there, right? And so you want to basically be strategic with your efforts. And if I had to come down to one solution or one answer for this video where I would either pick, you know, of having very few long tail keywords and that will be my only options for tagging as opposed to having a ton a ton of short tail keywords kind of like this I would actually go with having very few long tail keywords because those long tail keywords if somebody's going to be searching for them I have a much higher chance of actually being seen um, within that ranking so sorry for the yawning there for a second guys it's been it's been a little while but um, you guys hopefully can understand my point of view when it comes to this. And I'm interested to hear your thoughts. And like I said, I'm speaking on my personal experience and the testing that I have personally done and I've personally invested in terms of time and effort. And what I see is that generally, uh, for most of my designs, it's much easier to get sales from a keyword that has less competition, even though it has less search volume, as opposed to creating a design and hoping that essentially running a gamble on or gambling on it, hoping that it will rank for a very short tail keyword that could, you know, essentially hit the lotto. It's a golden ticket. So uh, for me, I like to go with what's safe and what's almost guaranteed, quote unquote. And of course, nothing is guaranteed in life other than death. But, um, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about when I mean guaranteed, right? The, the, assuming the highest chance possible. All right, so I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, peace out. Bye.